Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and today we are going to be comparing the ANK MK38 to the Oshkosh MTBR MK23. Now, these trucks are both, of course, very, very, very capable, and there's a lot you can do with them. However, one of the things we're not going to be comparing is cargo, cargo capacity because, as you saw in my previous video detailing all the features of the MK23 uh, MTBR, it really only has one unit in, uh, of cargo available in the standard bed. So we're not really going to be comparing cargo capacity, but more we're going to be comparing um, off-road capability in the sense of things like hill climbing, mudding, and potentially a bridge jump comparison at the very end, but we're going to be doing a quick build on both of these vehicles, and I'm going to try and sort of keep them a little bit uh, closely matched, and I'm going to be keeping the MTVR more on the less built side because it is a mod, and so again, I'm trying to line up the balance here pretty well, but without any further ado, let's take the MK38 into the garage, do a quick build on it. I haven't actually driven a stock one of these in a long time, so it's actually really cool to drive this one. And we'll take this one into the garage, we'll do a quick build, and then we'll bring it back out and do a build on the, um, on the MTBR. Now, I'm thinking that we're going to set the power to weight ratio around an S for both of these. And I think, with that being said, I'll probably do the A12B um, 850 TTA on this one. And we'll do the off-road gearbox, the raised suspension, and we'll we'll do potentially, I want to say the 51s on this guy. And yeah, 51-inch UOD3 tires. And winch-wise, we'll just do an advanced medium. And, well, actually no, spare wheel no, we won't put one on. And tall front-facing snorkel, as well as a wedge cap exhaust. And these, see, these add-ons won't really make that much of a difference, so I'm going to kind of just flip through these and do the, we'll just leave it stock, honestly, in the front end. And then wheels-wise, let's see, I want something that looks fairly old school. These look fairly old school. They really do, actually. So do those. I really dig those. And then from there, we're going to do a quick paint job. I like that one a lot. That one will actually look really cool next to the MTBR. And accessories, eh, we might as well throw, like, might as well throw a card and a sticker down in here. And then we will go ahead and bring this one outside of the garage and park it next to the MTBR. Now, I can tell you right off the bat that the turning radius isn't all that great. But then again, this thing is all-wheel drive and diff lock always on. So it's definitely not going to have the greatest uh, steering angle in the world. But let's go ahead and turn the engine off and switch over to the MTBR. Now, what's interesting about the MTBR is the fact that the MTBR is basically here to do the same job just in a little bit more of a modern way so this way okay so actually this is perfect because we have a caterpillar c12 engine which also puts the power to weight at an s so that means we balance them actually fairly well we'll use the allison hd 4070p with off-road mode and the standard suspension so we've got 55s on the mtbr and 51s on the mk38 so a little bit bigger on the mtbr but not too much We'll do a advanced heavy and diff lock engageable and let's see cargo two. Oh, I see. We'll do the two slot. So that means in my last video, I actually I actually got it wrong. Um, but because with this one, you should be able to do two slots because I guess because the tailgate is down, we'll just clarify that when we get out of the garage. But that that seems like what we'll be able to do. And we'll go ahead and put the engageable all wheel drive on this one and mk23 standard exhaust mtbr default wheels and we'll do we'll leave again the tan color scheme nothing on the interior customization so now we can head out with this one so my apologies for the whole uh one unit of cargo thing um it seems as though if you have the tailgate down you can haul two units of cargo so we'll test that out real quick although we are not going to compare cargo hauling or i said we weren't going to compare cargo hauling we might do some objectives with the cargo in the back so let's see Consumables, one, two. Oh! So you can do two as long as you put the tailgate down. That's actually very, very cool, and I'm surprised at myself that I didn't catch that the first go-around. Now, kind of debating on the fact that, like, I'm kind of debating on whether or not I should put cargo in the other one. You know what? I feel like I might as well put cargo in the other one just to sort of 
just to sort of even this out, you know what I mean? So let's change trucks. We'll put two units of consumables in the back of the MK38 as well, and we'll use that as sort of a additional, um, just sort of an additional thing to make it more interesting as we go through these obstacles. So consumables, one, two. This thing has a very weird, like, gear wine noise, and I've never been completely sure, like, how intentional it, like, it was for that gear wine noise to be as, really? I knew this thing was top heavy, but my god, I didn't realize it was that top heavy. So remember how I said I'd, it had been a while since I drove an MK38? That should go to show you how long it's been since I've driven one, because I forgot how insanely top heavy they were. I've driven a lot of trucks lately, and none of them have been the MK38, and it, uh, it shows, because those other units of consumables are literally sitting right there. Now, for the first round of testing, I'm going to do sort of a hill climb test, and it's not necessarily a normal hill climb test, it's more of an extreme hill climb test, but even if they make it like halfway up, I would consider that a good, you know, a, like a good performance. So, in comparison to hill climbs you'll encounter within campaign maps, this is probably going to be well into the more extreme side. But, that doesn't mean it's not a bad thing to test. So let's give the MK38 a go first. In three, two, one, go. Stalling out. Let's try it in low, low plus. Make short work of it in low plus. Absolutely makes short work of it in low plus. Now... Because this thing is so top-heavy, we're not really going to drive around up there all that much. We're just going to actually back it back down. And... Are you serious? So, the MK38 climbed the hill in low plus. It tried to climb it in high, made it about halfway, didn't want to do it. So, let's try this thing in high. Oh, wow. Oh, nope. Made it a little further than the MK38 in high, but still kind of grinded to a halt. But in low plus, makes it up no problem. It actually seems like this one spun tires a little tiny bit more than the MK38 did. But that's splitting hairs at that point. They both made it up. They both made it up very well. So now, we're going to move on to the next round of testing. And that is going to be mud. The shallow mud first. We'll do both of these in, in high until they start spinning, and then low plus until they start spinning, and then eventually end up in low. But in high range, in the shallow mud, MK38 does pretty dang well. Honestly, for a, a, like a default truck, for a stock in-game truck, really, really good job in the shallow mud. Now let's do the first mud lane in the deeper mud and see how that goes, see how it reacts to that in high. definitely spinning a lot so let's throw it into low plus see how it reacts in okay so low plus works just about fine Ooh, it sank in low plus as well and that was in the first mud lane now we're in standard low and we're continuing just a little bit further on and i'm thinking that we're going to turn around take it through the slightly deeper mud lane and then we'll come back and mud test the mtbr so, no, we're not even fully in yet, and it's spinning in standard low. Yeah, it's really spinning now. Really spinning. Low is able to maintain it. Well, I was going to say it was able to maintain a very, like, a slightly faster speed than low minus, but it looks like low minus is where this thing has to be in this level of mud. This level of mud is very, very treacherous for this truck. And it, it really does show because it's all the way down in the lowest of low gears. In the shallow mud in high, this thing maintains really, really good pace, shows a lot of confidence, and shows no signs of slowing down. Which, the MK38 didn't really show any signs of slowing down in high and the shallow stuff either. But moving on to the slightly deeper stuff is where it started to sort of slow down. Now let's see what the MTBR does. Wow! That was high. Holy smokes. In terms of a back-to-back -back comparison, that should tell you a lot right there. That's amazing. Now, I feel like some people may think that that, that right there is just like, oh, it's a mod, it's overpowered. And 
I'm not going to say one way or the other, but I would really like to know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below if you think that this truck being able to go through the mud that quickly in high range is unrealistic and, uh, and overpowered and unfair, or just a realistic representation of how much better this truck is than the other one. I'd love to know your opinions on that. So now, let's head in here, see what it does in high in the slightly deeper stuff. Wow, it's able to maintain it. Sort of. Low plus, it can definitely maintain. And it runs through a lot faster than the MK38 did. Like, a lot faster. A good, good, good amount. Honestly, I'm kind of, I'm kind of surprised putting them side by side. I'm kind of surprised at how much better the MK, uh, or sorry, the um, MK23, the MTBR, feels. I'm, I'm surprised at how much better it feels than the MK38 because I had a feeling that the MK38 was just going to feel a little bit more stout, but I guess not. All right, so the MTBR is going to go first off of the jump, and the last time we took it off the jump, it actually made a full jump and landed without any damage at all, which is incredible. All right, let's drop you off right there. Down the bridge we go. Let's go. It's up to speed, that's for sure. I mean, that's as fast as she's going to go with that off-road box. Amazing, amazing, amazing balance off the jump. I mean, it stayed relatively flat in the air like a dang trophy truck. Wild. Now I'm going to move you out of the way. Park you right here and switch to the MK38 and take it off the jump. Let's go. Come on. Oh, it feels faster. It landed almost in the same spot. That, that was a stock in-game truck that just got no damage whatsoever from a gigantic jump. I want you guys to think about that for a second. We just did that in a completely like vanilla truck, like a vanilla game truck. And it landed with no suspension damage at all off of a freaking jump with cargo in the bed. That is insane. But if you guys have any thoughts or opinions at all on which truck you think did better let me know those in the comment section down below and if you have a truck that you would prefer to take home let me also know that in the comment section below and if you guys enjoyed the video leave it a like and i will see you guys next time make sure to subscribe i'll see y'all later